Hello everyone and welcome to the third Cowboy Bebop live action Netflix adaptation podcast update. Very many words. I am here with GoPro Kill. How's it going, buddy? Hello. How are you feeling, homie? We're here to talk about the podcast, or we're uh, here to talk about Cowboy Bebop again, if you're not tired of that already. <laughs> Third, remember how we were saying, oh, we're not going to have another update for a little while. Well, some mishaps have happened, Keo, and we have to report on them. We got to let the good people yeah. know what's going on with John Cho. So He broke his knee, apparently. Yes. Oh, you, you just spoiled it. We were going to get it. <laughs> okay, Keo. <laughs> There was a mishap yes. that happened about two weeks ago, a week ago, by the time you're listening to this podcast. And a mishappening. A mishappening, unfortunately. Um, on set, <laughs> John Cho was uh, doing a uh, – what was the word I'm looking for here? Was just practicing what's – the, what's the correct pronunciation? Just a on set accident. How, how would you go about describing you, – you practice a lot, so what do you do? Uh, that, or, that would be a set – or a uh, scene rehearsal, yes. I suppose. Yeah, scene rehearsal would be the good terminology, I think. And apparently it was a well rehearsed scene. It was practiced. It was a not a not a big thing. Apparently it was not supposed. It's not where you would expect one to injure themselves, especially when considering that last time we were uh-huh. talking about they had a uh, producer just for the stunts and everything, a stunt uh, coordinator, and everything. And it was well rehearsed, mm-hmm. and it was at the last take of the day. And John Cho injured his knee, which sucks. Which really sucks. First of all, I'm sorry to hear that for you, John. That's never fun for anyone to injure themselves. Uh, what were your thoughts when you heard about this news, Keo? Um, I was just wondering what happened. Honestly, uh, it's not or er, uh, it's not uncommon for pe- for things to happen to uh, uh, people when they're doing live action. Uh, when they're doing live action s- stuff, there uh, there's more than likely going to be a few mishaps. You're more than likely to get injured doing stunts on set. I. Uh, it's not entirely uncommon to happen. Like, if you've ever watched the behind the scenes of the Lord of the Rings documentaries, you'll see like people have like had to be flown off into the uh, flown off to the hospital by helicopter because they were filming in New Zealand. And um, I'm hoping that they didn't have to do the same thing for John because I assume that uh, did it say where they were filming, or does it just say that he was injured? I believe that the last podcast we were talking about them being New Zealand and practicing the stunts there. So I believe that uh, I think it's in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and the other thing that sucks here is that because of this injury, minimum, minimum seven months before we start producing again and seven to nine mm, months. Yeah. That's a huge load of time. Like nine months from now is what? Like summer 2020? About, yeah. That's insane. That's like the the earliest we could see this happening. I think would be like May. Yeah, or, at, yeah, at, May at the least. I mean, like we're, I mean, like obviously at this point it's completely. Uh, honestly, at this point it's completely up to uh, like letting the letting the guy heal and just uh, <clears throat> just waiting for production to resume. I suppose. Exactly, but the thing is, um, uh, the article we were uh we're, we're reading here. Uh, was from the playlist.net. Um, they were saying how you know it's early production and technically it's early enough in the production for a recast, right? Mm-hmm. But Netflix has chosen yeah. not to recast John. Why do you think that is? Because honestly, it's still practicing stunts, so you could recast someone. Why do you think they didn't recast them? In your opinion? Uh, firstly, I would assume it'd be a bad, uh, bad for PR for them to do that. For them to just like cut the guy just because he got. Uh, uh, because it, I would assume it would be a work-related accident. So I think, uh, for one, they they would partially be responsible because he was working on uh on their time, and then secondly, I think it's also because they may that that they may actually just want the guy to be their lead. Like I'm I'm assuming that's uh, their reason. Like I'm assuming that they uh. That they actually went through like a casting process, and they wanted to give John the chance to play, uh, play a pretty big role. And like he's not been in that many big Hollywood productions. He's more so been a TV show actor, so he's been more of a t- uh, television actor as opposed to like a Hollywood, uh, like triple A film. So I think that. Right, right. Uh, so I think being on a Netflix show might be a good way to maybe see him 
get into bigger roles maybe who knows he might even join the uh uh, the upcoming marvel movies or something like that so like this could be like a gateway for him to uh get into bigger movies bigger projects uh or it could just and it could just simply be uh that they really like his performance and maybe he's really what they want for this project so i'm hoping that it's the latter and not just because they want uh good like points with uh points with their audience right 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 right. um so i want to go to the uh next article from that part Uh, basically i think they made the right call here keeping uh john show casted and you know what maybe with this delay seven to nine months you know they were in the middle of production but now they have time to work on other things that maybe they want to re you know (laughs) fans are giving the giving it a lot of criticism so it's a lot for them to think about think uh, about and consider so maybe this could be a good thing because with more time comes more uh ability to reflect and everything so okay the next article i want to talk about is about is from h and uh entertainment and they confirmed that the name of the working title of the production for the series is jazz band it's called jazz band which I get that jazz music is very much in, uh, a part and embedded into Cowboy Bebop and all things Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. But why the name jazz band just I don't understand why other than just that. Like, I mean, what, what maybe, your, your I mean, I guess other than rebranding, that's the only reason I can really think of. Um, the only real reason I can think of is just like maybe they just want to make it uniquely make it uniquely theirs because it's well now it's technically their project and they're and that's just i guess what they feel is best honestly that's probably the only uh thing that i don't like about it so far otherwise i think it i it, the rest of it looks pretty promising right um like I for, mean, the... for, for for us to yeah. come this far into it and only have like one real criticism thus far like i think that's a pretty good sign fair enough fair enough um the other thing here that the article was saying uh, quote the series is described as the jazz inspired jarm bending story of spike spiegel jet black faye valentine and radical ed so ed will be a part of the movie like uh, of the movie of the series so i, nice. I always said this privately but ed has not been cast yet that's another thing that uh, mm. is interesting uh, a ragtag crew of bounty hunters on the run from their past as they hunt down the solar system's most dangerous criminals. They'll even save the world for the right price. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's very much Bebop-esque. So, I'm excited to see this. That sounds and, pretty in character you know, to me so far. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the thing is, if you're going to call this series Jazz Bend, you better have Tank as an opening. You better <laughs> have Tank as the opening. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like, if they're <laughs> if you're going to rename it Jazz Band, you may as well keep the... Uh, keep the same theme, or or at the very least, like make a remix of it or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Three, two, one, let's jam! Oh yeah, I yeah. Love like, that ma- song so like much. I, I imagine they're probably just gonna make like a new, uh, a new updated version of it. Like just re-record it. Like probably keep the same sheet music, but like just uh, record it with like a different band or something like that. I don't know. I think that makes sense. I think that's. The, I mean, what like the, I think you're like since jazz is such an American. Uh, style of music and it was invented in america i assume that they're probably going to get an actual american band to do the like an actual jazz band to do uh the song how about they just get uh what would be a good jazz band i don't know any good jazz i don't know any jazz bands really like i don't think you know what like in this current time i don't think there's any like any other like genre bands aside from like pop music at this point like i don't like sadly, I don't keep up with the music scene either, so I wouldn't really know. I have an idea. Huh? We'll get the guy from Gucci Gang to do the 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 song. I have Gucci no Gang, idea Gucci who Gang. that is. Okay, you know what? Well, let's just go to the next article, Keo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, this is the final piece of uh, uh news that we really got. Um, we have Ayn, and we 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 saw the corgi being yeah, cast. Yeah, we have our but corgi. We actually we officially we have, have our, our corgi. Ayn. I think this corgi is like the literal live action version of Ayn. Like it's it's to a T. Yeah, the that's way pretty he damn close. You know what? I looks. really I really hope that they train this dog to do the the hiccuping scene at some point. <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> that would be amazing to see in real life. <laughs> 
I would be so down for that. And then they had they had this little uh, Netflix on October seventh. They uploaded a uh, behind the scenes of Cabo Bebop, uh, the production, and it was uh, the first uh, day on set. And we ha- actually had like the corgi with a GoPro attached to it, and yeah. it kind of went around the set. And um, and then we saw like, oh, this is Ein, and it got uh, it got shown to us and everything. Um, how much time do you think goes into cast? The like, casting people must be one thing, but casting a dog, an animal, it's gotta be so different, right? Uh, it's gotta be harder because like, firstly, you have to uh, you have to find your uh trainer and the trainer uh so like the trainer is who you're mostly casting like you're casting the trainer and then the dog so like if the dog looks right then the dog is uh the dog has to be well trained it has to be you know like you you can train an animal as much as you like but it's still an animal so it's still gonna like it's still gonna be hard to work with they said there there was an old saying uh, back in the day of early film that uh the three worst things to work with are uh uh children uh animals and i think uh animatronics i don't remember what the third one was but like it was saying that these three things are unpredictable and hard to work with just because like anything can go wrong or like anything that will will go wrong will most definitely go wrong right 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 actually here i i just had an epiphany i just had a, uh. i just had a revelation i just had i just figured out something i think i actually okay so on the uh, you you saw the behind the scenes video, right? Yeah. Okay. At the very end, you see John Cho, you see Daniela, you see Mustafa, you see Alex, mm-hmm. and the Corgi. They're all there, right? Yeah. But Ed Ed's cast thing person is not there, right? Yeah. So we can agree that Ed's gonna come later on in the series for uh. Or at Cabo the very Viva. least, they just haven't gotten. Or at the very least, they haven't casted the character yet. Yeah. Or they're, they're in production. Well, I think like if you're gonna be starting the production. And the, if it, if you're starting production on a single series on a single season and the character doesn't come till later, I guess you'll only get to that character then. But Ed's definitely gonna be in there. I just realized this, so it's gonna be a ten episode. Um, and I, I, I don't know if there's gonna be a second season, but at least the first season is ten episodes. Uh-huh. I don't know what to expect with this, with Ed like not being a part of the behind the scenes video, but we know that Ed's gonna be in there. It's, it's kind of a throwing me for a loop here a little bit. Uh huh. So I, I don't know what to make of that. That's a good question. I don't know what to make of that, actually. That's a little baffling. <laughs> yeah, it's a little baffling. But at the end of the uh, video, uh, they were actually there at the table reading, and you could see you could see uh, Ein there with his little Ein bowl and everyone. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I don't know how a day on set goes. Maybe you do, but I, I imagine that table readings are a big part of it. And then you have the stunts and other other practices to, to go through. So at least we know that things are in full swing. Well, we're in yeah. full swing until the accident. Do you think? What do you think happens to the other actors? Do you think they can like still practice their stunts? Or I'm willing to bet. Go, I'm willing to bet that they can still get uh, maybe like at least try and get some kind of work done. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do without your full cast. I mean, at, at the very least, I suppose you could. Uh, I suppose that you could still get some uh, stuff done and maybe digitally film uh john cho later on and then actually uh putting hit or li- and then like digitally editing him to like be in the scene but i think uh you lose a little bit or you lose a small level of chemistry between actors like if one of the actors isn't there which is why like uh, cgi characters are sometimes really hard to do oh my god that's true but i i i so, so I, I really hope so that they are you're that betting that that if they have anything to do with it or uh, if they have anything that they have or for the if they have anything for the other actors to do i hope they actually do it but uh otherwise uh i really hope that they just kind of wait up for uh john to get better and i'm assuming that it's mostly just uh uh letting his knee heal so yeah exactly the thing here is though uh i'm trying to get at so you're saying that you think the production is going to continue but in minor ways nothing too big to not throw it all off when john comes back into the picture yeah like i feel i feel like um the smartest thing to do is just uh probably just wait because like this is one of those delays where i think it's entirely based on uh just waiting uh for the 
uh, for that other actor to heal up. I can't really think of anything else uh, that they could really do in the meantime. Maybe maybe they could get all of like the the CGI stuff done or the practical effects done, like maybe the maybe they can get like all the exterior like spaceship shots taken care of, but otherwise um, I can't really think of what they could do while they're waiting for John to get better. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I think I'm in agreement with you. I think they they might do Minor stuff. I know that, like, because I, I study film music and everything. I know that the music and everything comes later on into the production. I wonder you, if yeah, you want to add that. You want to add that, like, at the like next to the end. Very like, end. you'll you'll want to add that in post, right before the mixing. Yeah. Well, yeah. you'll you'll want to do. Uh, you'll want to wait till uh, post production to do any of that. But um, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like there's not a whole lot they can really do. No, exactly, exactly. Um, I want to get to this. Uh, I have a bit of a more, more of a fun segment to get into. Uh, for so the the Netflix video came up right uh, right, and at this point it's sitting at about three hundred and sixty thousand views. It's got twelve thousand likes, so it's well received, right? Um, it's but a there dog are some video. comments it is. In, in this video. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it, it's a uh, yeah, it's it's more views than anything I've ever gotten for sure. Um, but. Here we have a lot of comments that I think we need to we need to talk about here. These these uh comments are are, are hilarious. Um, so the top comment I I just want to get your reaction to this from Melvin uh, Sewell. He says these people have no idea how much weight they must carry. <laughs> oh, everybody's gonna like, love the dog. That's... The dog is fine. Nobody's gonna like give heat to the animal. <laughs> No, but they're talking about. I think you're talking about the whole series here. Yeah, fair and then enough. Another one. Ryan Parker says, "I swear to God, Netflix. Dot dot dot. If you mess this up, dot dot dot. All caps. I will. Dot dot dot. Not care. I mean, the original still exists. I'll just go back and watch that. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> and then I think this other comment sums it up perfectly. X Odin says, "This is either going to be the greatest thing ever, comma, or a complete disaster." <laughs> Well, it's gonna be, uh, it's either going to be the uh, She-Ra Netflix series or it's going to be the Death Note movie. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's. I think it's either gonna be like the greatest thing ever. I think that comment sums it up perfectly. Or Death Note live action garbage dump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I I have a couple more uh comments that I think were really funny. All right. Um. Okay. Uh. Clo- the Cloven Box says, at least Ayn's casting was spot on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is he trying to say there's something wrong with that, with the rest of that cast? Because I think the rest of that cast looks pretty damn good. <laughs> it looks pretty damn good, Kim, but, you know, you could look one way, but act another. <laughs> yeah, looks can be deceiving, whatever. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, this this other comment is actually pretty, pretty bad. Hmm. Ushimimi says, Netflix. Cowboy Bebop, John Cho, I'm gonna be Spike Spiegel. John Cho's knee injury, I'm about to end this man's entire career. Netflix waits for uh, waits seven months for him to uh, recover because this project means a lot to them. Basically, right? <laughs> I mean, the rest of the comments here are like people are saying, like, my God, they are playing with fire. <laughs> um, oh, this other comment's pretty good. It says this scene alone, this whole update alone was already better than Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about Dragon Ball Evolution. <coughs> There's a reason we forgot. More comments or should we just go to the IMDB I stuff? I think we're good on that. Let's just get to the IMDB stuff. Yeah, okay. So I was looking over at the IMDB page for uh, for this and... I don't think uh, I don't think there's much more uh, updating here. But you noticed something earlier with the with the producers. Uh, do you want to bring that up? Or uh, I think it said that. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. I did say uh, something. So I did see. Uh, let's see. Um, so a couple of the writers uh, for this show worked on the Netflix uh, Dark Crystal series, and I actually binged through that completely. I don't know if that tells you guys anything, but honestly, in my opinion, the de- the uh, Dark Crystal Netflix series, mm, perfectly baked pie of deliciousness. But anyway, there's that, and then I think one of the other writers also worked on uh, Thor Ragnarok and then Thor Dark World. So for those of you guys who watch movies, uh, that should be a very polarizing thought, but at the same time, Thor Ragnarok is actually a pretty good movie, and then Dark World, that's uh, 
leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> it's literally, it goes back to the comment, the greatest thing ever, and a death no live action pile of garbage. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. So I actually was looking over uh, the cast list, and I think we have some new people that have been cast for minor characters in uh, Cowboy Bebop. We have two new characters that were cast um, here, Dara. We're talking about the other one uh, is ca- uh, is cast as uh, the thief. So I-, I think it's just a minor, minor character. So for one episode, we have uh, Rodney Cook is going to be cast as the Teddy Bomber, uh, the big guy, the Teddy Bomber in Cowboy Bebop. And then we have... Uh, Jay Paulson, whoever that is, who was cast as Hakeem, who was another minor criminal mm-hmm. in Cowboy Bebop. These are really minor one-episode characters. So I guess basically these these actors specifically being cast shows that those uh, specific events in Cowboy Bebop will be covered in the series. Yeah. You see what I mean? So I think as, as the cast thing list develops, we can know, oh, they're going to talk about this episode. We're going to talk about this episode. So that's really good in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Were any thoughts? Um, no, honestly, I mean, like that just kind of tells us what uh what episodes we're gonna be in for. Basically, I think that's the only thing it really uh confirms. Um, and, and then, uh, so far, we, uh, yeah. or I think we, I think we may have covered this already, but um, the so I read it looks like uh, <clears throat> it looks like they've ordered uh ten episodes thus far, and that just means we have an exact yes, like did. uh. 10 episodes are definitely going to be made. Uh, and with Netflix, obviously, they're just going to make the 10 episodes. They're going to leave that there. Then start production on the next one if it's well-received after about... Uh, it looks like they give it about a month for uh, to like say whether or not if they're going to do another uh, season of something or not. Right, right, right. But, yeah, that's... I think that's about everything we've got to cover. Uh, unless you have something else you want to bring up. I want to bring up that you should plug your stuff. No, no, uh, yeah, no, basically that's everything I think <laughs> that we have to cover. Keo, can we agree that 2019, this is the last update? Like, I really think this is the last update, right? Honest to God, I think this is probably going to be it. I mean, we'll probably not be getting any other updates until later in next year. So I probably expect a podcast in 2020 around summertime. <laughs> We'll just have to yeah, see. Yeah, exactly. What, we're just or gonna spring, have to see what spring. happens. Whatever happens, happens. Exactly. All right, Kyo. So, uh, plug your stuff away. Have you done any chill cast with the uh, musicians lately? Go ahead. I did do a chill cast. Uh, you guys can check me out on my uh, channel, GoPro Kyo. I'm gonna start doing a podcast called the Chill Cast, where I just uh, sit and talk with other YouTubers, other friends, uh, just people that I know and that I've worked with before. Um, I think my next one is going to be with, uh, Miss Moonified VA. She's a voice, a not safe for work voice actress. I know on Twitter. Um, if you guys want to see that, just stay tuned to my channel, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon, all that stuff. And you guys can find the rest of my stuff on my channel. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's also on my YouTube page. Uh, take it away, Jayanne. Yes, so for myself, you can obviously subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Giant Music. If you want to hire me for freelance services, giantmusic.com. Uh, music, audio production, I got you. Composition, I got you. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at Giant Music. Um, and you know what? Let's just leave it at that. All my links will be on my channel. I have an Instagram. I have a Discord server. I have a Patreon. All those things are going to be in the description. Go check them all out. Go follow me everywhere. I always appreciate that. Uh, I think it's going to be everything. So here's uh, to another uh, five months of not updating you guys. Because I don't think yeah. there's going to be anything for a good <laughs> little while. Probably not. But uh, we said that last time and look where we are now. So. <laughs> right, right. You know what? Let's. We'll see you next time. That's it. <laughs> yeah. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.